Hey, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to now in this lesson, we're going to learn how to constrain a round object to a flat object. So we can't just go and do our normal constraints, mate and flush. We can't just use those how we would putting like two flat objects. Like let's say we're putting a box together or something like that. We can't just do mate and flush on this. We got to do a couple other things. So if we go to constraint first, let's take a look here. If I mate this cylinder, notice how it's finding the center line. If I say, hey, this cylinder, I want to go down to here. Notice how it went inside of there. That's because when I click mate, it's finding the center point of that circle. So it's finding the center point of that cylinder. That's no good. I don't, I don't want that. So I don't, I don't want to do that style. If I really wanted to, I could offset it. Let's say I know the, so this, the diameter of that circle is 0.25. So just from doing some calculations, I could offset it by half of it, but that's that's kind of a, a pain. Like, why even do that if we have to? So what I can do instead is I can do a tangent constraint. So I'll show you that. So if we look at this symbol here, we see, hey, this is like a round surface touching a flat surface. Well, that's what this is here. A round surface is going to touch that flat surface. So I go to tangent and I want the outsides touching, not the insides, I want the outsides touching. I click the outside, and then I click this, this surface here, and then I apply it. Now if I look here, that cylinder is, is now resting. So if, I'm gonna imagine that this pen is the straw, so this cylinder is supposed to be a straw, and my hand, let's say, is the bottom of the vehicle. So now that cylinder is down there, and it's touching, so that's good. Right now, I don't want that offset, but I could offset that if for some reason, maybe in something you're doing, if you wanted to offset that, maybe make it go up or something like that. So let's say one inch. There it goes. So obviously, I don't want to do that right now. So I want that to be zero. And as of right now, I just constrained the y axis. So that means I have two more constraints to do because when we when we constrain remember xyz constrain all three so now i have to constrain the z and the x so let's do the x so if i look here this surface here think about that is that flat or is that round and the thing about this surface here is that flat or is that round now, if this were at an angle, let's say I chopped it so it wasn't straight up and down, well, then that would be a little bit more difficult. I'd have to do some changes in terms of how I'm going to do this. But because I know that's completely um, parallel, this surface is parallel to this surface, I then can do the flush. And the reason, one reason, again, that I want you to think about is why we can do the flush is if we think about if that cylinder has eyes on it, that surface of that cylinder is pointing that way, and then that surface on here is also pointing that way as well. So they're both like looking at the same wall. So that's, if you remember, there's an assembly lesson that kind of talks about that. So I click flush. That brings that cylinder back. So now these two surfaces are flush. But let's say I don't want that there. So then I need to offset it. Let's say I offset it, let's say two inches. And let's say like if I'm typing two inches then that's what it should be I'm not just gonna like guess um, your design should tell you where it should go so then I'm gonna apply that and then I have one more constraint to do so I'll just show you where we're at so if we look here right now this thing is stuck so it is it is stuck except it's moving in one of the axes and it, that would be the Z axis that it's moving in so now I need to constrain it in the Z axis I clicked this surface to constrain it. I click this surface to constrain it. So that must mean now I have to click this surface to constrain it because there's three dimensions or three axes. So now here to here. So I think about this again. Well, that's a round surface. This is a flat surface. So if I do a tangent constraint, I'm doing it to the outside of that to here. And then now that brought it to the side. So like it's like, hey, I don't want that there. I want it in the center point. So that must mean I have to do it halfway, which is 0.5. My vehicle is, a, is one inch thick. So that must mean then the halfway point is 0.5. Now, 
I want to show you what happened here. So if we look, it's actually not centered. And that's where I need you to trust me that this vehicle is one inch wide. The halfway point is 0.5. So this is, the computer did exactly like I told it to. I said, hey, I want the outside of this 0.5 away from here. It did exactly that. So I could mess, I could continue messing with this number to then get it centered. And I know I just have to divide this by two and then add half of it. That's kind of a pain. It's six, two, five, I think. Yep. So that's kind of a little tricky to have to do those calculations and try and remember that. So instead of doing that last constraint as a tangent, if you remember, our first one that we tried was a mate. When we mated it to this surface, that was wrong because then it was like sinking in there. But one thing that was nice about the mate is it found the center line. So that makes me just, let's start thinking about that. Hmm, oh, it mated to the center. So if I want to mate it from the center and offset it from here, that will be a lot easier than having to do other calculations. So I'm going to try mate. Mate from the center, so I got that dashed line from the axes, the center axes of this tube to here. Now that it did bring it over, but remember, I'm going to offset this. So now it's to the center. I'm going to offset that, let's say negative 0.5. Well, now I didn't have to do those goofy calculations by dividing this diameter in half and adding it or subtracting it. I didn't have to do anything like that. So I just, I did mate from the outside of this, or I'm sorry, from the center of the cylinder to the outside here. I apply it, and now that straw is 100% stuck in there in the center. And whether you're putting a dowel on some foam or whatever, so just in terms of putting a cylinder on a flat surface, that's how you do it. If these surfaces are rounded, if there's something else going on, if these surfaces are angled or rounded, well, that adds a little bit more complexity. And then you might have to put in these uh, work planes and those types of things, which I'm not going to cover in this specific lesson. So try this out, and I wish you success.